1 Kings chapter 12. Rehoboam went to Shechem, for all Israel had come to Shechem to make him the king. When Jeroboam the son of Nebat heard of it, for he was yet in Egypt, where he fled from the presence of King Solomon, and Jeroboam lived in Egypt, and they sent and called him, Jeroboam and all the assembly of Israel came and spoke to Rehoboam, saying, Your father made our yoke difficult. Now therefore, make the hard service of your father and his heavy yoke which he put on us lighter, and we will serve you. He said to them, Depart for three days and then come back to me. So the people departed. King Rehoboam took counsel with the old men who had stood before Solomon his father while he yet lived, saying, What counsel do you give me to answer these people? They replied, If you will be a servant to this people today and will serve them, and answer them with good words, then they will be your servants forever. But he abandoned the counsel of the old men which they had given him, and he took counsel with the young men who had grown up with him, who stood before him. He said to them, What counsel do you give, that we may answer these people who have spoken to me, saying, Make the yoke that your father put on us lighter? The young men who had grown up with him said to him, Tell these people who spoke to you, saying, Your father made our yoke heavy, but make it lighter to us. Tell them, My little finger is thicker than my father's waist. Now my father burdened you with a heavy yoke, but I will add to your yoke. My father chastised you with whips, but I will chastise you with scorpions. So Jeroboam and all the people came to Rehoboam the third day, as the king asked, saying, Come to me again the third day. The king answered the people roughly, and abandoned the counsel of the old men which they had given him, and spoke to them according to the counsel of the young men, saying, My father made your yoke heavy, but I will add to your yoke. My father chastised you with whips, but I will chastise you with scorpions. So the king didn't listen to the people, for it was a thing brought about by Yahweh that he might establish his word, which Yahweh spoke by Ahijah the Shilonite to Jeroboam the son of Nebat, When all Israel saw that the king didn't listen to them, the people answered the king, saying, What portion have we in David? We don't have an inheritance in the son of Jesse. To your tents, Israel. Now see to your own house, David. So Israel departed to their tents. But as for the children of Israel who lived in the cities of Judah, Rehoboam reigned over them. Then King Rehoboam sent Adoram, who was over the men subject to forced labour, And all Israel stoned him to death with stones. King Rehoboam hurried to get himself up to his chariot to flee to Jerusalem. So Israel rebelled against David's house to this day. When all Israel heard that Jeroboam had returned, they sent and called him to the congregation and made him king over all Israel. There was no one who followed David's house except for the tribe of Judah only. When Rehoboam had come to Jerusalem, he assembled all the house of Judah and the tribe of Benjamin, 180,000 chosen men who were warriors to fight against the house of Israel to bring the kingdom again to Rehoboam the son of Solomon. But the word of God came to Shemaiah the man of God, saying, Speak to Rehoboam the son of Solomon, king of Judah, and to all the house of Judah and Benjamin, and to the rest of the people, saying, Yahweh says, You shall not go up to fight against your brothers, the children of Israel, Everyone return to his house, for this thing is from me. So they listened to Yahweh's word and returned and went their way according to Yahweh's word. Then Jeroboam built Shechem in the hill country of Ephraim and lived in it. And he went out from there and built Penuel. Jeroboam said in his heart, Now the kingdom will return to David's house. If this people goes up to offer sacrifices in Yahweh's house at Jerusalem, then the heart of this people will turn again to their lord, even to Rehoboam the king of Judah, and they will kill me, and return to Rehoboam the king of Judah. So the king took counsel, and he made two calves of gold, and he said to them, It is too much for you to go up to Jerusalem. Look and behold your gods, Israel, which you brought up out of the land of Egypt. He set the one in Bethel and the other in Dan. And this thing became a sin, for the people went even as far as Dan to worship the one there. He made houses of high places, and made priests from among all the people who were not the sons of Levi. 
Jeroboam ordained a feast in the eighth month, on the fifteenth day of the month, like the feast that is in Judah, and he went up to the altar. He did so in Bethel, sacrificing to the calves that he had made, and he placed in Bethel the priests of the high places that he had made. He went up to the altar which he had made in Bethel, on the fifteenth day of the eighth month, even in the month which he had devised of his own heart, and he ordained a feast for the children of Israel, and went up to the altar to burn incense. So um, Solomon dies, King Rehoboam takes the throne, um, the children of Israel don't like the fact that Solomon was using forced labour to build the kingdom, and interestingly he was mostly using people of the northern tribes for forced labour, not using his own tribe of Judah. So of course the northern tribes don't like it, Jeroboam is one of these men that's had to flee for his safety and he's been living in Egypt. And um, so I looked this all up and we'll, we'll learn more about this in the next chapter, but the, in, Solomon used to have a deal with, the, with Pharaoh in Egypt and he married Pharaoh's daughter. Now that was Su, Pharaoh Sutsunese II, who was the last king of the 21st dynasty of Egypt. Now he dies and a whole new dynasty starts, the 22nd dynasty, and the, the king is Shishak, or Shoshenk the first, and he's a Libyan. So he's a, a conquering African from further across Africa that's come across and taken Egypt, and he's got no loyalties to Solomon. Um, and he's the king, he's the pharaoh in Egypt for the last, I think, 13 years of Solomon's reign, and then he's then the king when Rehoboam becomes the king. So Jeroboam, who's, you know, Solomon's enemy, he flees and goes and hides with Shishak. And when Solomon dies, Jeroboam comes back and he's the one to lead this delegation to say, look, your dad made life tough for us, how about you make it easy? Rehoboam doesn't listen to the wise advice of the older people and says, no, I'm making it tougher. And so there's a rebellion and Jeroboam becomes the king of ten of the tribes. Some interesting things are found in here. Rehoboam says to, these, to the Israelites, he says, my little finger is thicker than my father's waist. That's in this version. In a different translation it says, my little finger is thicker than my father's loins. Now we're getting a bit more specific. And I think technically, you just gotta put your thinking cap on. He was basically saying, my little finger is thicker than what? And it was, he, he was basically saying, you thought my dad was a man, well I'm more of a man than my dad was. And so that's what he was basically saying. And he says, oh, you know, my father whipped you, but I'm gonna whip you with scorpions. <laughs> and so they would have thought, oh my gosh, we can't have this, everyone, we're ditching the king. And so they went and, and split apart and started a new nation. So this is where Israel gets confusing, because you know, Israel is originally a person, Jacob, then Israel is, you know, a nation, the sons of Israel, and then Israel is a, a united nation with a monarch, you know, like King David, and then now Israel is another nation, the northern nation, because they've now split into two, and the two nations are Israel and Judah. So you can already see that Israel is four things by this point, but as we go through the Bible, we find out there's a spiritual Israel, that's us, the church. Christ is the Israel of God, that's six. There's also an Israel in the world today, a political country. Seven. Seven Israels. That's why it gets confusing sometimes. And um, so Jeroboam becomes the king of the northern nation called Israel, the first king of the first dynasty, and there are many of them. But Rehoboam continues to be the king of the southern nation. Now this is where something interesting happens, and all the way through the kings, they're gonna keep referring back to this moment. So what happens is Jeroboam is given a promise by God and he says, God says to him, if you will follow me like David, I will establish your house. So there's a promise, um, but he doesn't. He thinks to himself, the temple is in Jerusalem, but all my 10 tribes, are gonna, they're gonna to want to go to Jerusalem to worship. And he thought, I don't want them going there. He said oh, he, he wanted to consolidate the power outside of Jerusalem, so he started playing political games, and he rationalized in his mind, we can still worship the same God, 
but let's make some new places for this god to be worshipped. So he made two golden calves, just like the one that was made by Aaron in the desert. Remember that? Back in the book of Exodus. He made two golden calves. And he put one at Dan and one at Bethel. And if you know your geography, the northern ten tribes, the very top of the northern ten tribes is Dan, and the very bottom of the ten tribes is Bethel, which I think is only about 20 kilometres north of Jerusalem. I didn't measure it. it. might be 18 kilometres north of Jerusalem. So he didn't want people going to Jerusalem, but he said, look, these are your gods which have brought you out of Egypt. And remember, they thought very differently to us. They often thought that the leader himself was a type of representation of God. And so the people started kind of worshipping God, but kind of worshipping these calves. And it's what we call syncretism. It's where you mix true beliefs with false beliefs. And all around the world this does happen. Possibly you and I have some syncretism in our lives as well. We're, we're so sincere in following the Lord in some ways, but there's things perhaps we do that aren't the way the Lord would want. But what we've got here is a really terrible example of syncretism where they, they, they're very obviously doing things that the Lord does not want. And so Jeroboam basically sets up a false religion. He sets up these new two places of worshipping, two new idols. He sets up new priests, because remember priests could only be from the Levites, but now he picks them from anyone he wants. And he sets up a new feast and a special time of the year that people had to come. So he replaces all the things in the law with his own versions of them. And then he says to the people, it's too much for you to go to Jerusalem. You know, these are closer. It's gonna be easier for you. Now, when have you ever heard that type of thing in modern society? I've heard that type of thing where Christians say, oh, you don't have to go to church on a Sunday. You can just stay at home and serve the Lord on your own. And there may be, it may be technically true in some types of ways that you can be a Christian on your own. But there's a very similar thing to what we've got here where people start saying, oh, I don't have to join in with God's people. And remember the word church, church isn't a building, church isn't a service, church is God's people. Church is the people of God. So you can't have church without being with God's people. It doesn't make sense. And so people start rationalizing in their mind and soon they're not going to church, soon they're doing their own thing. They think they're serving God, but they're not serving God at all. It's a very slippery slope away from the plan of the Lord. And that's what happens here with Jeroboam. And all the way through the kings, they keep referring back to the sins of Jeroboam. And because he deliberately chose to set up something to stop the people from following God. And it's a terrible, terrible wickedness. So we have to be careful of syncretism. We have to be careful of things that look like they're what's, what God wants, but they're just to please ourselves. Heavenly Father, help us to avoid the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat. Lord, we all fall into traps, like Solomon fell into a trap, tempted by things. Lord, there's so many examples of people doing the wrong thing, and it's easy. Lord, you said that the path that leads to hell is wide, and many people find it. Father, I ask that we would not find it. Lord, but give us grace to find the narrow path, but to walk a walk path of blessing, a path where we are raised up. Let your grace be given to us in Jesus' name. Amen.